Okay, let's call the meeting to order, if you could, please. Thank you. Uh, Nelson Fiscal Court will meet in closed session as per KRS 61810. Uh, 1G were discussions between a public agency and a representative of a business entity and discussions concerning a specific proposal were open discussions which jeopardize the siting, retention, expansion, and upgrading that business. We'll do that at the tail end of our regular business meeting. Uh, first regular order of business would be the minutes, minutes from the December 15 and January 5 meeting. Everybody had an opportunity to read those? Yeah, motion to approve is presented. Thank you, Sam. Is there a second? Second by Jerry Hahn. Any further discussion? All approved, say aye. 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 Disapprove. Motion will carry. Next would be your bills list and your additional bills list. On your additional bills list, uh, Rhonda, I've got a, 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 a final bill this morning from uh, Dave Cook uh, for the concrete work out that's $3,100. So you want to add that on? Add that to the bills list, if you would, please. What was it? 3100 the, the, the concrete coloring was a little more expensive than I anticipated yeah, from the figure I told you fellas earlier. Put it on the landfill and hang right behind them trucks. <laughs> you reckon? <laughs> yeah, did you see that one? No, I didn't see that. <laughs> you didn't see that one? The two new uh, dump, uh, are are they no in? loss? They're in. They're in. Yeah. What, they're re what they're referring to is two invoices uh, for $137,713 each for the landfill for the two new roll off trucks. I didn't bother me there as bad as that 30 some thousand for another. Yeah, you're exactly right. Motion to pay the bills. Motion pay the bills and transfers as presented. Thank you, Bernard. Is there a second? Second by Jerry Hahn. Any further discussion? All approved, say aye. Aye. Disapprove. The motion will carry. Next would be appointments to uh, various boards. First would be the Health Department Board by by a new regulation of the uh, State Health Association or Health Department, uh, a magistrate now needs to serve on the local board and uh, I asked for volunteers. And our local board meets once a year. That's all we're required to meet because we belong to a district. Our district meets quarterly. Uh, Sam Hutchins was the first response <laughs> on this. and. Uh, no, he has agreed to serve on that, and I think Sam will be a good member. I think everybody make that motion. Yeah. <laughs> 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 who, who would make that motion? I'll make the motion. Motion to approve Sam. Sam. Who do a background check on him? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like the dog that caught the car he was yeah. chasing. Is there a second to that? <laughs> I'll take second by Bernard Ice. All approved, say aye. Uh -huh. Disapprove. The motion will carry. Next, uh, reappointment to the D Design Review Board. David Mattingly has agreed to continue to serve on that board. And done an excellent job. Is motion. he the realtor? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm going to motion to that. Thank you. Second. Second by uh, Jeff Lear. All approved. Say aye. Aye. Uh, Disapprove. The motion will carry. Next will be a new appointment to uh, the uh, Joint <coughs> Planning Commission. Uh, Teresa Kamek has uh, stepped aside, and we have a new member that, uh, uh, a new person that wishes to serve. and. Bernard Ice and I have talked about this. Bill Bush, uh, entertain a motion to approve Bill. I'll make the motion. Motion to approve by Bernard. Second, Second by Jeff. All approved. Say aye. 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 Disapprove. Motion carries. Bill's back in the back there. Just to put a face to it, Keith. Where you at, Bill Bush? Bill. I'll always like, court, he's always court like court. to see who I'm voting for. <laughs> he, Appreciate you coming. He, uh, he's actually been in court before on a couple occasions. Appreciate you taking the job. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to serve. Uh, next will be a reappointment, uh, and that was the Dennis Caldwell has agreed to continue to serve. He actually did, too. Yeah. I told him last night it was either agree or he was under duress. He's going to have to do it. But and he's yes, going to make an effort to be at uh, more of the meetings. Yeah, he, he, did, uh, he did agree. So I'll make the motion to reappoint. Motion been made. I'll second. Second by Bernard Ice. All approved. Say aye. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Disapprove. The motion will carry. Okay, next would be a tax moratorium request. This uh, piece of property is directly across from the Civic Center. Uh, Two-story brick been abandoned by the family for 
several years as far as somebody living in it. They kept the yard mowed and trimmed and so forth, but uh, they decided to sell the property. Uh, it's, uh, the new owner would be Daryl Hawkins. He's acquiring the property from the Payne family and uh, he's anticipating spending $75,000. I don't think that's going to be enough. He'll figure that out when he gets along. That doesn't really matter to us. What's this mean down there? Pending deed? Uh, he has not recorded the deed. Uh, and we want, I want to go ahead and get this process. So, you know, there's a 30-day window that they have to present this to court. <coughs> I'll make a motion to approve it. Anything on that, if that you yeah, get a piece of the property. Plus. Uh, motion made by Jeff, second by Sam. Discussions, Keith? I'm done. Okay. All approved, say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Disapproved? Motion will carry. I didn't want any one of these additional two weeks, and he wants to get started. He's going to supposedly get some junk out of it and get started right away. Okay, we'll move to the road department report. All right. Uh, <coughs> just routine maintenance, opening ditches, rocks, and shoulders. Uh, we're boom mowing in District 5 still. We're in the Stevens Lane area. Uh, we'll go to District 4 after that. After we get done with the entire district, it just takes a while. Uh, we are co-mix patching. We did get new co-mix in. Mago came in. It's a it's a high performance mix. Mago agreed to, to swap it out. We call it UPR, Ultimate Pavement Replacement, something like that. It's a trade name for a Canadian outfit. It's who makes the oil. Anyway, uh, it's a type of. If you want to go buy something, you can go to Lowe's. Yeah, and what I understand, Lowe's sells it in the bags. If I have UPR it, on it, it, it of course, I've it's six hundred dollars a ton. Hole on the lane there for almost two years now. Uh, it, it's about six hundred dollars a ton if you buy it at Walmart. I figured it up. Six hundred dollars a ton. So, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it, it's kind of interesting that it's the same trademark material. Looks like we had more than normal down there. It's pretty good pile. Well, they they brought in a little bit more than what we took out, but they just called it even and we paid the bill. The bill's on the bill. The bill is you guys $110. This stuff's normally about $130 a ton. The KP6, which is a state mix, which... Uh, That's is, higher, right? No, the KP6 is $110 a ton. The, the high performance mix is, is, is $130 a ton. We bought the KP6, which doesn't didn't do good. Now, the state has a hot box, they call it. It's a trailer. I sent a picture out to you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not pushing something like that because it's probably not too practical, but that's what they've gone to because of this problem of it being very, very I, I stiff. If this mix, if it's done right, the last, even the previous year, our cold mix was doing a great job. Last year's was good, yeah. and it was a KP6. We didn't have any problems, but this year it wasn't, and it's, who knows, I don't know. Different oil comes from different suppliers, things like that, yeah. you know, so. But anyway, we did get it replaced. Uh, it's, it is pretty stiff this time of year it's cold so it, it but you know it's more pliable than what we had you don't have to use picks to get it to break apart and stuff so uh great all well, the great all still down it's still down there in tennessee we're waiting on a part and transmission they had some hard parts some broken parts and they're waiting on a part supposedly the dozer the parts are in on its transmission it wasn't a transmission it was some other gear parts or whatever i don't even know which parts we're talking about but uh it's so cold they you know this thing's sitting outside and that's how they put it together so they haven't put it together yet so uh that's where we're on that type of thing snow plows ready for tomorrow snow plows will be ready by the end of the day uh we everything's ready but two trucks uh, two trucks we're using the cold mix. The uh, we got. Uh, I got a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And that's all I got. Okay. Jim, Jim, and I had decided we were we're not going to make Jessica wait to the end of our regular business meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I did it anyway. I started. I've already moved it back. Moved her back up, Jim. <laughs> yeah, I just remembered you told me you. I moved her up, and I forgot about it. <laughs> Jessica, uh, you want to introduce your new city employee? Yes, I want to thank the court for allowing us to come speak to you today. We had a presentation scheduled with uh, Ron Householder, but he was able had to decline and cancel due to an illness. He got had to call in sick, so to speak, for for today's meeting. But we'd like to go ahead and introduce our new GIS person, David Evans. He's working for the city, um, doing all of our mapping and so forth, and he's being uh, working very intricately with E911, Debbie Carter, trying to work towards uh, readdressing for city and county. 
So we've been working pretty hard on that, and we were hoping again we could have a presentation today to give you the public a little bit of an idea of why that is happening and why that's important, and kind of that whole process. But we are, regardless, we're moving forward and um, identifying all the addresses that need to be um, readdressed in order keeping a proper numbering scheme, uh, private roads that need to be named in order to find folks uh, out in the county and, and so forth. So well, um, I'll come to maybe the February meeting of some sort. Maybe right, whenever he gets back in touch out. with me, we'll, I'll be in touch with you guys and try to get another date scheduled. Hopefully we won't have to wait very, very long. To David, do you live in Nelson, Barstown, Nelson County? I do, yes, sort of uh, here downtown. Okay. So. Well, yes, welcome aboard. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, we'll move to the uh, landfill solid waste report. Brad. Uh, for the news media, because we're getting a lot of phone calls, we are running on schedule this week. City garbage collection is behind, but we're on schedule. So we're getting a lot of phone calls, a lot of confusion on that, the way it was maybe uh, people misunderstood or whatnot. But just want to get the word out on that. Uh, we did get a two new guard, a roll off trucks in. Uh, Burner's been out to see them. We it'll be a couple of days before we get them in service, just because of paperwork, uh, licensing them, and whatnot. You have to get them dirty. No, eventually. <laughs> I want to stay froze. We want first day. The first day. <laughs> first day. <laughs> first day. <laughs> first day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Those are that, that was a, that is a good investment. Right. So what we'll do is. Uh, I don't know if Dean knows this yet. One of our trucks, Burner does. The truck we dumped the pits with, it's a, it's a real old truck, but we broke the bell housing on it last week uh, where the transmission and you did meets up to the engine. Try and find used parts for it so we can fix it back. It's a good truck to do that with because that way I don't stick a good backup truck or a good truck dumping the pits. And if you guys ever been out there, you know, to dump the pits, you got to get the truck dead up against the wall and it was up in the landfill, so an old truck is best to do that with so we don't make a good truck into an old truck. You understand that concept, what I'm saying? We're in the process trying to find parts. That truck was there before I was there. 1992, so, it was... I thought it was four. We, when we took over the landfill, okay. we had to start, remember, we when we took over, we had to start dumping the pits, so we had to have that board. 92 to 95 is when we were in that The next one was a Mac, wasn't it? Mac, the Mac. I will come to you guys once we get all settled in. I'm going to surplus that. It, it, that's that one. It's been a good truck. It just wasn't great set for a landfill application. Um, just there's a lot of details why, but I'm not getting into them. Uh, our garbage truck itself, you know, because we've ordered one of those, but it's it's a month behind this one. Just it takes longer with the bed and whatnot to come in. So it'll probably be a month before that one comes in. Uh, the uh, city has gone to a front end loader. You, know, you, you and I have had this discussion, so I'm not uh, blindsiding with this. Okay. Uh, I think it's good for the public and the magistrates to understand. We, you know, we've had those discussions over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't you explain why that's not real practical at this point, at least for the county to consider? What Dean's referring to, if the public or the magistrates haven't seen it, it's a front end dumpster truck, not specifically for residential. <coughs> So the reason it works better in, in a more city setting Compact. is because all your dumpsters are close to each other. And so you can make a route where you can run and get them all, and, it, and you can do it quickly. And it's really actually worked well for I think those it's guys. Well for the, city. Uh, the only issue they've run into is one, they're getting a little complaints from the public. The dumpsters are a lot taller, so it's an issue for the people who are doing it to get the stuff in. The other issue is it's a big truck. It's a big truck. So you got to be careful where you put that truck as far as overhead lines and whatnot. Now, why it typically wouldn't work out into a county setting? And I'll give an example. Say we're in the New Hope area, and we go down, we're picking residential garbage up as we're going along. Well, we'll hop in and hit a store somewhere and get that dumpster as well while the guys are out getting the oh, residential route. Right. Instead of running another truck. Right. It wouldn't be practical to run to, to <clears throat> New Hope, to New Haven, to Ball Town, then to Boston, and then Chatham, and running a truck everywhere to get these dumpsters. So what we do is we got a rear loader. As he's driving down the road, he pulls in, stops, and gets the dumpster with a rear load truck. Um, an isolated dumpster, too, generally. Speaking. Right, right. We've got all together about 150 dumpsters scattered out all over the county in different locations. Uh, so, you know, that wouldn't keep a dumpster truck busy, but two days, maybe. 
where the city, you know, they've got three times as many dumpsters as we got, and they dump them more often because of the restaurants and whatnot. So yeah. the application just isn't there for us. I mean, mm -hmm. there's options they have for those trucks where you put a, um, for lack of better words, a dumpster on the front of your truck, you're riding down the road, dipping it in your dumpster, and then you dump it, and then when you come to your other dumpster, you put that one down, you come over, and you actually dump the one at the um, business. I don't recommend that. They're just they're riding down the road, and with our rural roads, we take up enough of the road as it is. So we've never gone to that. I mean, it just doesn't work well in a rural setting. That's kind of why. Same reason why it doesn't work well. If you ever seen those trucks that have the automated arms that come out and grab it, the problem is Sam may live on a hillside that's a rock driveway that slopes away from the road. Well, typically you'll have your can. 20 feet off the road or wherever there's a flat area. Right. Well, the guy has to stop, get out, move the can over. It kind of defeats the purpose. Works well in city settings where it's curb and gutter and everything like that. Those trucks are very expensive too. I can see a kicker on the back end of it at some point. Our it new truck will have a kicker on it. Yes. We've gone to that. What Sam's talking about is it's a, a assist lift. Yeah, and it's just a little plate that comes down and you roll your big container. What we run into anymore, low sells these 96 gallon containers. Mm -hmm. That's fine, as long as people bag the stuff up. If they don't bag it, we have issues that get heavy. Sure. So our new well, truck... Can't lift one of those 90s right. Like that, you know, so our new truck, you'll be able to roll it over there and there's a little gadget there. You pull it up on, like better words, push a button and it flips it up for you. And so we mm -hmm. did go to that. I mean, that's like a $10,000 option. Right. But down the road, <laughs> Uh, it'll save these guys from getting an injury from trying to hoist that 100 pound. That, and it'll save a lot of phone calls of people yes. complaining about cans not getting completely empty for yeah. loose trash or heavy reasons or whatever. If, and if, and if, this week we'll have a lot of that. Yeah. A lot. So, that's why. Thank you guys don't mean to get into too many details. But. EMS report. Uh, nothing new to report. Thank you. Okay. Do you have a report, Marcus? <laughs> Okay, today we have a total of 144 inmates. We have three in Hardin County, three on home incarceration. We have 28 state inmates. We have 10 serving weekends, so we have an in-house total of 128. Of course, we got a district court today and a circuit court again Thursday, so hopefully everyone will make some of that. Uh, that's all I have to report on the count, but I have a full-time deputy that is retiring the 31st of this month. Uh, Gary Gibson, and I've got a part-time deputy who's interested in the position. Uh, it'd be Corbin Hack, and he would start uh, February the 6th full-time. The fiscal court would approve him. He's been part-time for about two years now. And you'll move him up to that full-time position? Yes. Yes. Just made a motion to approve. Thank you. Is second? Second by uh, Jerry Hahn. I'll approve CI. Just approved. Gary? That's all I have to report. Uh, Corbin Hack. C-O-R-B-I-N. C-O-R-B-I-N. B-I-N. Corbin. B. Okay. I think so. Yes. Uh, some family. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dorcas. Uh, recreation report. Uh, we got our rec board meeting tonight at 6 in this uh, room. Uh, just trying to clean up and get everything ready for the spring. Uh, soccer and baseball are about to kick off, and uh, soccer starts in uh, March. They're doing sign-ups right now, and baseball is doing sign-ups right now. So if anybody wants to sign up their kids, sign-ups are going on right now. Uh, doing a lot of just clean up of brush and stuff trying, from a lot of the wind that we've had in the last few, uh, few weeks and storms. Uh, doing some painting. I sent you some pictures on some painting of uh, oh, like that, that fence, that fence that I uh, redid, and just doing some tie downs some uh, the metal fencing around that's been. Just and and you're going to work with the uh, associations that you meet tonight with the uh, contracts. Yes, and we'll work on the facility agreements. Do you guys know what the contract we're talking about? It's the contract between fiscal court and those on agreement on who's doing what, who's providing what. Just laying it all out on paper on we're going to grass, what are you going to do? you got to have insurance, that type of thing. The city did it all the time, too. We just need to get it in our name. The balance. I'm going to say fiscal court's name, I should say. Yeah, I talked to him to, uh, last, yesterday afternoon. All right, thank you. 
Uh, next on the agenda, <coughs> on this to, to keep the discussion rolling on uh, E911 funding. And I did a little more thinking research and found out that on the utility bills, I got to thinking that uh, utility uh, bills, we normally run into about a 10 to 12 percent delinquency rate based on uh, the garbage bills that we deal with, Matthew, and I think Matthew will agree with that. The, the number may not, you may not be aware of, but we deal uh, constantly with people that, for instance, they have a, they have a bill with Salt River Electric and, and uh, they're able to make some type of payment month by month. And, and so if their bill is, say, $300 and they pay Salt River $150, a lot of times Salt River will keep their electricity on it. But none of that $150 payment is applied to our garbage bill, nor any other fees that would be associated with. And this would be a fee, uh, the Supreme Court says it sh should be a fee, not a tax. You remember those discussions? So um, uh, the more and more I'm thinking about it, we ought to at least continue to have some dialogue about the tax bills themselves, where you have uh, probably less than one, two percent delinquency rate and then when you do sell those, you get the money from the tax lien companies. You get, you're, we're pretty close to being 98, 99% on the tax bills when it's all said and done. Am I wrong in saying no, that, Matthew? Yeah. I mean, just food for thought. My only thought is you're not mm -hmm. getting the renters unless the landlord applies, applies that. that. You're not getting the renters uh, participate in this. Uh -huh. uh, and you, I mean, you will constantly <coughs> be uh, trying to collect anywhere from thirty to sixty thousand yeah. dollars, constantly. I mean, it is a. I don't know how the <coughs> utility companies deal with it. It is a constant battle dealing with. It. But that would be the only fair way to do it, wouldn't you? Well, the we, 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 think, we, we think the probably the, the fair. I think the fairest way would be utility bills. Right. I understand that. And I'm not I'm not sold either way on it. But I just, my job is to lay everything out and tell you the negatives and positives going both ways. Is there any way we can put it on a license plate? And pretty much catch everybody. I have not explored that idea. Okay. Let me go back to the cell phones. Seventy cents a month. And uh, that's a state. Okay. Uh, where everybody's every <coughs> cell phone is paying that. That's going to the state of Kentucky. Uh, it is projected that the revenue on that this year to us is $172,384. So you divide that out by 70 cents a month or $8.40 a year. And it looks like that we're collecting taxes on about 20,500 cell phones. Now there are 44,500 people in our county. Now how many cell phones would you guess are in this county? Yeah, double the twenty-two thousand that we're collecting from they probably that, that Money doesn't come directly. No, no, but it goes to the state. Per user basis, it's for other things like the grants that we get. Yeah, I understand. You know, so it's divided up. It's not all of it doesn't come back to you. So I think they are talking about thirty-five, forty cents may come back to the county. Yeah. I mean, this is what the, when Frankfurt when they're trying. It's to still get not revenue generated. Thirty-five or forty time. cents of the dollar. Mm -hmm. Of the seventy cents. Oh, okay. seventy. Of the seventy. Yes. Eventually. Yeah. Is that what you're yeah. planning? Is that close, Debbie? Yeah. But, but my yeah. point though, my point though, is at seventy close. cents, we're Nelson County citizens are still sending seventy cents a month to Frankfurt, Frankfurt. and and our eight dollars and forty cents a year, and 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 so what what is the real number? Right. <clears throat> I mean, for me, it would just, you know, I could see where it'd be simpler if it was spread out over a period of time paying this instead of one lump sum on a property tax bill. Uh, a lot of folks really haven't budgeted for that, but it's, it's, it doesn't hurt near as bad $3 on your light bill as it does 50 bucks on your tax bill. Your, your I, I'm, I'm, we're having, yeah. this is an open discussion. There's no preset. Just so you guys know how our garbage works. Yeah, I know. I'll give you an example. If Sam Hutchins owes two hundred dollars on this electric bill. He still owes us fourteen fifty, right? If Sam only goes in and pays a certain amount, Salt River gets their share first. Right. So that's the only you got to have penalties involved, which we do with our garbage collection. You don't pay. Matthew ends up taking people to court, and we eventually get our money. It's a long, drawn-out process. 
Um, but you got to watch that. I mean, that's the only. And, thing. and I, that's what I see even on this uh, this week's uh, bills list where we pay for delinquent sure. services. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, ten thousand dollars to Salt River. To to, you know, and about a third increases. Sure. Yes. But it might not just be a matter of efficiency either. It could be a legal matter. Matthew right. might might be able to. to time in on this, but the way I understood the decision that, that, uh, that I read, and I'm no attorney, but, uh, it, it had to be a user type fee. You had, you had to uh, uh, get the revenue from someone who was using the service. Yes. All right? yeah. You know, and, and a vacant lot on a tax bill doesn't call 911. Right. Even though you but if you're out there mulling that vacant lot and you fall off the tractor <laughs> and the bush hog ran over your arm, you will call 911. And that guy paid uh, his fee somewhere else. Wherever his house is at, he's paid He's already fee. paid. Yeah. But, you know, this, and if I understand correctly as well, it's not legal set of matter, right, between the Gary County or Campbell County case either one. Campbell County's face, case, the way I see it, is much more advanced than the Gary County case. Well, I think there are parallel Who's cases. Who's suing who on that? Huh? Who's suing who on that? You, you I, think it was a, I think it was a friendly uh, lawsuit. They wanted to get a judgment on it. They, uh, Campbell County and Gary County. Government? Gary. Physical court. Physical court. Yeah, yeah. It, it looked like a consortium of like uh, landlords okay. sued the physical members. So the people that were getting charged the fee were right. got together. And then a lot of apartment owners, wasn't it, Matthew? Yeah. I think it was an apartment I think that's the only challenge to the tax I bill. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think Campbell County is, I don't know, I, I haven't heard of it. If that was decided by the Kentucky Supreme Court not going to go anywhere unless it goes up to the U.S. Supreme Court, but they won't take it. So, uh, Campbell County is pretty, well 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 pretty well done as far as I'm concerned. And Fee yeah. County is on the... the it, I, I talked to Gary, Gary County Judge, and um, they're still waiting. They think they'll have a decision any time now, and they think they will win because they've titled their ordinance as a fee versus a tax. Right. Now, Campbell County, they're $40 per? $45 per. $45? Does the several counties have a health tax similar to what we're talking about? We're in a minority. In right, our district, minority. we're the only county in our district that does not have a tax. Do you can look at tax. some of the ordinance and see how they work. I'm talking crazy now. What's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're on a different subject, Bert. <laughs> no, 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 Chance <laughs> blood pressure just popped. <laughs> see, see how they collect that. Uh, they're collecting on the tax bill. That's a tax. Okay. Everybody. Again, we're in a minority. We're the one of the few counties that does not have a separate health tax. I think it ought to be, I don't know if you could ever say fair, but something that's equitable for everybody, you know, in the fairest way of doing it. But Just bear in mind, if we do, the, if we do it on the utility right. bills, I truly believe you'll be 10% behind whatever you, well, where we estimate, estimate will constantly be because, and, and, and Salt River and KU and Inner County, all those companies, they all deal with that. They built that into their system over the years and know how to deal with it. But a, a fee is much different than it. They, they, have, they can flip the electricity off for the uh, not paying the electric bill. You're not going to flip the electricity off for not paying a fee. What's your other option other than the fee? I thought the fee would be the best way. Well, well it's probably, uh, probably a tax bill at the end of the year. Probably tax bill like we did do the fire service. All right, if they don't pay, it's still the fee. Or yeah, and how is it fair? Tax? You know, you stop thinking about it. How is it fair on, on the... It's, it's really not even more fair, but yeah. the way of collecting it is we'd have to put a lien on the property and then go through that whole process. Is that, well, my point, though, is how, how I just open for discussion, how, why does a landlord have to pay that fee on their tax bills? And we're not getting any service out of it. And, and the renter is getting the services getting by it. Right. Same That's principle. What I'm uh, it would be up to that landlord to just bill off. his tenants for. He's, he's hopefully for, collecting that in yes. his whole process. It, 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 you're never going to get it fair to everybody. Yeah. It, it's just like it, when your kid drives to school and you're still paying taxes on school. <laughs> it's just the way it is. <laughs> so really the best thing to do is to decide, in my opinion, is uh, pick, to pick the system <laughs> that's going to get the best amount of get the return. the return on the money and, the and not it sounds like you'll have a battle either way with everybody the greatest percentage on your return will be your taxes you well, think so? that's my job to tell you the pros and cons you think it'll be that i was hoping to be so, the, the, it's simpler the fee on the tax bill the you'll collect the, you'll collect more than you will at, 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 than you will the utilities 
So, so if he owns one. multiple properties, but he paid multiple on, on, on each of the properties. Okay. That's the way the Campbell County set up. The way I love, I mean, but they did give a grace period. Like said, they did I'm give a grace get, period. You know, I'm get 100%. Please. Occupied, occupied property, yeah. The way I like the, the tax on the tax bill, it's once a year. You know, see what I'm saying? If you do it on a utility, it's every month. Every month. I mean, that's 12 months. There's but it, 12 it's not different as bad. Things. It doesn't hurt, no, no, it don't hurt as bad. Another but. thing to consider, when you put it on utility bills, the utility company's going to get a percent for collect. They'll get a small percent. That's the on the property like tax, it. it would be, uh, I don't <clears> think you would have to talk to the sheriff, but since the sheriff receives a service, he may want to consider waiving some part of that. <laughs> if it's a fee, it's 1%. If it's a tax, it's 4%. 4.25, isn't it? <laughs> and you, you, you kind of forget and that you don't have any generosity in your heart at all, do you? So that's, so that's what it's about, 1%, it. so you compare it. Is that a KRS it. thing? Hmm? Is that a KRS that mm. you have to collect it? The, the KRS is on the, on the fee. Uh, it's set up. K A R or K R S, I don't know which one it is. So it says they get one percent of the, any fee on the cheaper monthly. The, on the on the uh, fire tax that we did several years ago, and by the way, that had, I think the fire department would agree that's worked real well for the fire department. And the, you know, the steady funding mechanism. We got very little backlash on that system, even from the landlords. How often can you raise that? Do y'all have to make a motion to raise it? We have to go through and redo. Yeah. After you do the ordinance, right? yeah. Mm. But take it off the land. We'll all think about it. We'll come back. We'll have some more discussions. I just want to make sure that we keep the license plate. I've kind of thought about that, but I don't know how. I mean, I don't know how many license plates we got in Nelson County. I guess the lane could come up with that. But what you try to typically try to do would be uh, where most where you know. Yeah. That's once a year too, homes. though. Yeah, that's once a year too. So you just want to do a property tax if you want to do that. I don't know property tax. The reason why I like the license plate more, it don't affect the person that owns apartments. The person that drives that uh, car lives in that apartment. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? I'll do some, I'll do some uh, checking around. Right, Wherever so the judges conference conference that brought that up two years ago. Yeah, but not everybody with cell phones drives a car. You well, that's why we're trying to get it away from the cell phones, and because, like I said, the cell phones goes to a fund up in Franklin, and they decide. You, you can forget about that. Yeah, yeah. There's not going to be any increases in cell phones, no. and, and the next again, it's not going to be fair across four to eight years. Four to eight years. <laughs> well, and, 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 the and governor, and the governor, and the governor, state senator, money that you need to operate the 911. And really, for folks that have the landline, it's going to be a wash for them. They're not going to pay the landline fee, but they will pay this. The only ones that will pay after will be the folks that have gotten rid of the landlines. That's what it amounts to. Yeah. yeah. And like she well, said, they, they everybody paid it until one time. One time. Yes. Yeah, the yeah, last four or five years, haven't it? People buying cars. I thought you said we had an excess on that last year. The usage tax. Usage tax. Yeah. Is, is for you see the increase. The fees that we charge, no, they have not for quite a long time. Mm. <clears throat> Moving on. Okay. Yeah. Um, any other business, other old and new business before we go into closed session? Anybody else have anything under old and new business want to bring up to the court? Any recommendations, ideas? Otherwise, uh, entertain a motion to uh, go out of regular session and into closed session. As per KRS 61-810-1G, we're discussions of a public agency and a representative of a business entity. And discussion concerning a specific proposal were open discussions which jeopardize the siting, retention, expansion, upgrading that business. Jim and Brad, stay, please. So moved. Motion by Sam, second by Bernard. All approved, say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Disapproved. Motion will carry. No more